Hello, hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. James here, as ever, for today's ACCA tax, that's the F6 paper, where we're going to be walking and talking through some top tutor tips to help you get over the line and get that 50 plus that you're looking to pass your exam. Now, I'm delighted to be joined today by Aileen Edgar, who is a top tax tutor, who's going to take us through her top tips that she shares with her students. So make sure you leave us a comment below. I've left all of Aileen's details down there so you can get in touch with her. But Aileen, the floor is yours. Feel free to introduce yourself. Thank you very much, James. Uh, yeah, so hi, everybody. My name is Aileen and I am a tax tutor and I've been teaching tax since 2008. And since then, I have worked for, I think it's four of the um, accounting professional bodies in the UK. Um, most important for the students I now uh, deal with is that I worked at ACC and I was in the tax exam team. Uh, responsible for signing off the tax papers. So um, that was a few years ago now, so I can't um, tell anybody what's in any of the exams. There's no point um, asking me. I wouldn't anyway. But it does mean that I've seen behind the scenes and I use that to try and help my students understand what the marker's looking for, the examiner's looking for and that type of thing. Fantastic. All the students listening are there going now, right, pen and paper at the ready. Let's get down some of these tips because it's clearly going to get me some more marks in my exam. But let's get the ball rolling, Aileen. In terms of your first top tip, what do you say to your students as to the, the first foundation to passing this exam? I think the first thing they need to understand, and they probably have heard it from their friends, is that tax is a huge syllabus. And if they've done any other of the ACC papers, they might feel they, they, they've got an idea of how long it takes to study some of these papers. Um, but I think until you've actually seen and got started getting into the tax syllabus, I just don't think people realise quite what we mean when we say it's a big syllabus. Yeah. There's a lot of areas, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's what takes people by surprise sometimes. Um, and I think they get to a certain point, usually about halfway through studying. And at that point, all the rules are swirling around in their head and they've got vague memories about rules. And they start to get confused because they're now learning a few different taxes. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think there's that there's a there's a crunch point in the middle where I think people start to start to you know, the heads start going down and they start to flag a wee bit. Oh, it's all coming flooding back to me now as to, was that income tax or is that corporation or is that VAT? Yeah. Or is it again? Or in terms of for your students then, in terms of the syllabus, how long do you usually recommend for someone to spend sort of so they have a really good understanding of the syllabus? Yeah, I design my courses so they run kind of over a 12 week period, even though it's all pre-recorded and it's designed so people can do it in their own time around their own schedule. But I like to see students leaving themselves at least three weeks for revision, ideally four. But mm -hmm. we've got to be realistic. Things creep on yeah. um, sometimes. So um, and with to get through the whole syllabus. Um, I think you've got to give yourself about seven, eight weeks. But everyone's circumstances are different. If somebody's a full-time student, they've got much more time to yeah. be able to do that. If you've got three kids and a full-time job, oh, yeah. and um, you know your sister's getting married next month, then you've got a lot going on. And mm. people need to um, be kind to themselves and be realistic. Oh, it, it can just get so overwhelming and that's even before we get on to question practice on there but in terms of breaking down the syllabus what sort of tip areas do you have for that as to that you like to help students with yeah so income tax is the biggest area in the syllabus in terms of volume of material and all of us learning providers basically hit you with income tax first of all mm -hmm. but there's a good reason for it it's because it actually gives us a lot of foundations for some of the other taxes. So corporation tax, you will find easier because you've got some foundations on capital allowances, on trading adjustments, losses, things like that. You already have some understanding and you will mm. find it easier to do corporation tax afterwards. But I do find that students get a wee bit stuck getting through income tax because it's just so big. Um, and my advice 
the, the biggest piece of advice I can give about the syllabus size is to keep moving, just keep going. You will give, give yourself that three, four week buffer of revision at the end and just keep moving through the tuition. You can come back to pensions, which, you know, let's face it, you you may not pick up the first time you go through it. It's tough. It's, it's complicated stuff. But that's what your revision phase is for, coming back to these areas that you find tougher. Mm. If you just spend two weeks trying to learn pensions, you're going to run out of time. Yeah. So you've got to keep moving oh, through it. I like, I like the structure of that. So 12 weeks, sort of eight-ish, maybe pushing <laughs> nine on the yeah. extra material, and then sort of four, three weeks uh, at the sort of minimum for revision before your examination on that. But what, what would you say? Because you're going to have students who come to you who have worked in tax and who haven't worked in tax. What, what advice have you got for students in that sort of position? I think the good news is that it assumes you know nothing about tax. It builds you up from the very beginning, um, takes you through the whole thing from um, an income tax computation has lots of different elements to it, but we guide you through each of those and we build it up into a full computation. Um, obviously, if you work in tax or you've got some sort of experience, then you are going to find it a little bit easier to get your head around some of the concepts. But generally speaking, people who work in tax tend to focus on one particular area of tax. Yeah. So they might be quite knowledgeable about VAT, but less so about the other areas. And there's also a tendency for them to know too much and too much knowledge can be a dangerous thing um, because we do have a syllabus which has very set cutoff points. Um, there is, there's much more to tax than what is covered in these exams. Mm. Um, therefore, if you work in tax, you maybe know beyond the syllabus and yeah. actually you have to rein it in a bit. Exactly. You might just, yeah, st sticking in your lane as to that's my niche in val VAT, value added tax. And then you get little to no exposure, but you might know that VAT, every single little rule. But then yeah. for, the, for the actual exam, well, this is the expectation of what we need you to know on there. So, oh, brilliant. Are there any other final points on the sort of syllabus areas that the guys have got to make sure they get noted down on there? Um, do not question spot. That is my big tip about the syllabus. There are going to be areas you don't like. VAT tends to be one of them. Mm. But, um, you know, so many students get that agonising result of 49 and you just and and you think, but did you miss something out? Did you think I don't like VAT or I don't like capital gains relief so mm. I'm going to avoid that and I'm going to focus on the things I do know and just those few marks could have right. just even if you just got a bit of knowledge about those areas yeah. that would have pushed you over oh, the edge. State the basics apply it to the scenario in, especially in section C as well this is where mm. your exam technique on it for the exam just comes into it as well but what, what are we thinking then for your tip two what's the next thing mm -hmm. that again you couldn't let a student who's writing away their notes not take down today. OK, so tax is not all about numbers. People who are obviously training to be a qualified accountant. Clearly, you like numbers. That's why you want to be an accountant. And people go into tax thinking, great, it's about the numbers. Maybe they've just done audit and they want something that's got lots of numbers in it. Um, and again, this comes back to this point about lots of students getting 49 and just needing that we push over the mm. edge. And I think they're surprised at how much narrative there is. Now, the, the weighting is more towards calculations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. But there are a lot of deadlines, penalties, conditions that you need to know. You need to... Um, in, in section C, you will have to give some narrative explanations, maybe yep. about the best way somebody can use a loss or something like that. It's, it's not going to be for a huge number of marks, but those little things can be enough to get you over the line. So don't just think it's about the numbers because it's not. Oh, definitely. It's, it's always they write it on ACCA's website as to imagine you have a client the other side of the table, especially in section C, which. For, for your notes is the one that is marked by an actual person on there as well. So you've got to communicate effectively, get your points across, and even just little things about writing down the company's name, the person's name, the correct year end. 
these are all sort of stemming back to my last tax exam that sort of oh. that that was the difference in passing for me yeah oh that what you're saying there makes me i think of a super top tip is um don't if it's a narrative um in section c and you're asked to for example say when somebody's tax is due or the tax is due on something don't give the rule a client has no idea mm. what six months after the end of the month of death means give them a date an okay. actual date with a year you yeah. have to be specific if you just tell us the rule oh it, the returns due within 12 months 12 months of what what does that mean the client has not got a clue what that means so please give a specific date that's half mark or one mark and that could be the difference <laughs> Yeah, I know we, we talk about it just these are the fundamentals as well just reading through the question and it's think about it I always had it in my mind as to look they can go online and they can find some of these rules and they can google it but then it's mm -hmm. the application to the scenario which is yeah. the difference between getting the mark and unfortunately not getting the mark on there yeah, definitely good grief good grief and in terms of other areas of exam technique that we're thinking about. So we've got section A, B, and C. Out of yeah. interest, what what with, with your students, students you've helped out, what way do you advise them to go? Is usually a question I get quite a lot. Yes, and that's actually my my third tip is All right. before you sit in that exam or at home if you're doing a remote exam, um, you need to know what order you're going to attempt that exam in. You must already know before you go in, before you've even looked at any of the questions, you need to know, you need to have practiced this. So for my students, they get um, three different mocks that they get to do as part of the course. And I'll say to them, look, after the first one, how did your timings go? How did it work out for you? Did you do section A first, which is the objective test questions? Um, or did you do maybe section C first, which is the longer style questions? How did your timings work? Did you find it? Did you find you felt calmer or did you feel more nervous? Mm -hmm. And then so let's think about swapping it round. So maybe in the second mock, we swap it round, try it the other way round, see how you feel. Everybody's yeah. different. I wouldn't say people have to do section C first and then, you know, do section A and B and do it that way. But I think probably most students, I think that's quite a good strategy for them because you obviously get your your marks for uh, workings in mm -hmm. section C, whereas section A and B, it's all or nothing. You're either right or you're wrong. Uh, exactly. And and coming on to some exam technique with that, you, you've you've seen lots of examples on practice platforms and, and on worksheets. What's your sort of best bits of advice for students who are trying to use the platform, get their answers correct, especially for section C? Yeah, so I, uh, first of all, put away the, the pen and the paper. Stop using pen and paper. And I know I would find that really, really hard too. So I, I totally empathise. But you're not doing your exam on pen and paper. So you need to stop mm. um, using it um, as much as you possibly can. Uh, you can go on to the practice platform and you can get the blank workspace. And so when I do little debrief videos of past paper questions, I split my screen into half. And I have half with the PDF of the, the question or whatever. And then on the other half of the screen, I have, I normally use a spreadsheet function um, for tax. And then I just go through kind of how I would approach the question. And I think students should just do the exact same thing. I think you should sit with the blank workspace. I know you can use Excel if, if you can't yeah. go into the, the, it's absolutely fine. I generally don't find that we need to use formula that much or anything in mm. CX. So if you want to use Excel, it's fine. At least you're practicing on a similar format like it would yeah. be in the real exam. Now, because exactly. I am because I'm so cool, Aileen, as well, I have read, just like you have, the external examiner's reports for taxation. I know it's my bedtime reading. Um, it, it's obviously, you know, I, I just entertain people when I'm out for dinner with these things. Exactly. So that's why I don't get invited again. But uh, <laughs> on that. <laughs> They do mention, and I don't know if you've seen this in some of your student attempts, that some students try to put all of their workings in one Excel tab on there. I couldn't believe it when I read it. Has that ever happened to you from, or maybe they've just tried to cram it in two of them and they've not communicated to the marker 
what yeah. it's actually for, or they've mixed up some of the mar- uh, the minuses on there. Have you had any experience yeah. with that? Yeah, I think um, I, I, there's there's something floating around that students have in their head, which is the marker can see inside the cells. Mm. It's okay, they can see my workings. And that is true. Yes, they can. But the marker also has to figure out where on earth all these numbers came from. And of course, if you've made a mistake somewhere further, a lot, you know, ahead and uh, sorry, above in the, the computation, and you've pulled the wrong number in from somewhere, or you've yeah. done that thing you're saying you've switched adding back versus deducting or something, something's gone wrong yeah. somewhere in your computation. The marker has no idea where this number has come from. And it's really difficult for them to give you credit. And they really do want to give you credit. They really do. Um, so my recommendation is I know we're not doing it on pen and paper, but I want you to imagine that you're laying it out mm. on a bit of paper uh-huh. and you do all your labels um, and, and do it that way. Don't yeah. try and do it all in a formula and then give the marker this thing they have to unpick. Oh, I know. Something. Uh, it comes it comes back to the fundamentals doesn't it as to if someone was to come up to you and say right james how do you pass the advance, uh, how do you pass the taxation paper you go well first and foremost it's on the cbe platform doing questions to time under exam conditions and the other thing i always add to that now is i'm going to design the answer as if i've got to mark it as well so that it's just line by line going through all my workings that if i was to mark it go oh Cool, half a mark there. Cool, half a mark there and just go down it. Versus, is it possible to cram all of my tax workings into one little cell? Hmm, don't think I'd really appreciate having to mark that. No, no, that's a really good tip, actually. Yeah, put yourself in the the shoes of the poor marker who's now on their 600th script or something like that. Exactly, yeah. And and the beauty of, You'll, you'll see this from your experience as to what how do you talk about, say, own figure marks or carried forward marks on there? How does that work within the tax paper? And maybe explain yeah. it to the to the viewers so that they know what it means so they can get the marks. Yeah. Some some of my students, when they get their first thing that's been marked by me back and it's got the initials OFR mm. next to something they've written, they go, what's that mean? What's OFR? And it's own figure rule. And so your markers are going to, if you've made, say it's a capital allowances computation, for example, and somebody's made a mistake with one of the lines. Now there's half marks all over this computation. So actually there's no marks for the very numbers you have at the very bottom of the whole thing. And that's not what you're getting your credit for. You're getting credit for the workings that you've done all the way through. So if you've made a mistake somewhere at the top um, and say you've put in a figure of 100,000 instead of 50,000, okay, you've lost that half mark. Okay, it's done. Um, But your marker then has to recalculate everything you've done after that point. It's really good fun for a marker. They have to recalculate everything and figure out if you have applied the correct knowledge to the rest of the numbers based on your first error. So I put OFR next to, maybe it's like a tax liability and I'll put OFR next to it. It means you have got the right tax liability for the numbers you have used in your computation. But somewhere above, I have already told you you've made a mistake. Hmm. Because I don't want to tick their tax liability and then go, oh, hang on a second, the solution said it was £20,000 and I paid 5000 That doesn't make sense. How can I be right? But you've got credit. And that that is the beauty of um, certainly tax exam, and it'll work for the other um, financial type exams as well, that... um, you can get completely the wrong answer at the end, but yeah. still actually get almost all of the marks. Decent marks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But again, it comes back to past papers, doing them to time, evaluating it through. And from your experience, how do you say about the sort of learning curve with applying these sort of rules and allowances for your students? Does it just just come along like that? Because there will probably be some students here who go, James, I just I just don't. It's just not clicking yet. What's your yeah. advice to that? It's a lot. I think you get closer to exam day and probably the most common comment you'll see about TX is, how do I remember all the dates? How do I remember all yeah. these rules? It just feels like so much. Mm. Um, so the best thing you can do, for, well, two things, I suppose. Actually. The best thing is question practice. Always question practice is the best thing to do because you will learn from making mistakes. 
Um, as long as you spend time going back over the question, look at the requirement again, why did I get that wrong? Okay, is it lack mm. of knowledge or did I not read the question properly? Um, and I definitely think for TX, um, get some flashcards, get some key facts down. Um, remember, you've got tax tables that actually tell you some of the information. Mm. Don't forget those in the exam. They're like for national insurance calculations, everything's there on the tax tables. You, yeah. But if you can't practice using them, you might struggle. Exactly. Um, so figure out what you need to remember and what things are going to be there for you in yeah. the exam and tax tables. Completely so agree. Try, trying to work out different ways to either picture what's going on, apply apply the question to your own life. Uh, mm -hmm. These sort of things help as well. I know in the exam, if you're actually in a centre, you are allowed a scrap piece of paper if you're actually physically there. And mm -hmm. what you can help with me is just drawing a timeline out where I go, right, hang on, yes. 31st of January on here, or if it's a company, right, this is the year end, and then we've got yeah. to work back. Little things like that may seem really insignificant, but when you're on under the exam pressure, just yeah. by saying, right, okay, we are here, and then the transaction happened here. Ah, kind of get it now, and which yeah. which sort of tax year it applies to. Yeah, I think I think that's a real timelines can be really helpful. Um, because sometimes if you've put down a date, sense check it. Mm. Does that make sense that it's that date? Just logically, does it fit in with the timeline of everything else that's going on? Mm sometimes you sometimes you're, you're just one year out and it's it's horrible to see you oh you were so close i know i know but i i completely agree with when you mentioned the tax tables as to if it was me i'd be there going through them going i've got to know everything about these tax tables that if a question comes up on income tax boom i can check it off i've got the right allowance or if, if we've got a certain figure it needs to relate to all these little things just save you time in the exam because I'm sure all your students say, oh, my word, I ran out of time or, oh, my word, I haven't got enough time on here. What, what's the general feel for the, your experience of this exam? Yeah, this is why mocks are so important. And I know students quite often are like, I don't feel ready. I don't feel ready. But I would much rather you felt that way for a mock than mm. the actual exam. So you just need to do mocks. Yeah. Uh, whether you feel ready for it or not because it's part of the learning process and one of the the things of course it helps you figure out the things you know and the things you don't know but it helps you massively with your time management mm. um, and if you've had that uncomfortable feeling in a mock where you ran out of time and realized that you missed out an entire question I think the first time that I see people doing mocks quite often they'll do ABC as their structure yeah. and get to section C and they'll run out of time for the last question. Definitely. And so then we can have that conversation about you have just made it so much harder to pass this exam because you've missed out 15 whole marks gone. Yeah. You could, you could get having to get 50 out of 85 versus 50 oh, out of a hundred. Really? You've made it really hard for yourself. Indeed. Um, Indeed. I mean, are there any other final top tips that are lingering on your mind that you went, oh, my word, James, I can't sleep tonight unless the guys get this jotted down. It could be the difference in getting the 50 plus. Anything else that's springing to your mind? Um, I think you need to make use of the free resources that ACC have on their website. Um, they've got technical articles. It's a must read. Some of them are really, really long. They are but you need to you need to go through them not just once i would do them as you're going through each technical area mm. and then go back to them again during the revision phase go back onto acc's website look up the technical articles and go through them again they've got little examples in them to explain some of the concepts and i just think it's really really helpful it's um, fun. yeah lovely lovely stuff i mean for for section a any student who asks me about it is James. I just make silly mistakes on section A. I just, I just don't read the question properly. I just think, oh, section A is the easiest part. You know, I'll just breeze through it. And then they do a few practice questions. They go, oh, I should have got that right. So That's reading cool. the question is so important. And and also the actual, if you're writing, if you having to write down um, figures, sometimes they do it in in thousands. So you have to be careful with the with the zeros in section A and section B. That's another one. You sometimes 
some I've seen some students that don't select two answers. Maybe they'll only select one. And, you know, yeah. just that's two marks thrown yeah. away, straight away um, on there. A lot, along with the best thing that always helped me in the tax exam was I, I, my brain just sometimes just didn't quite get like income tax, corporation tax. So I used to have a sheet of paper for each one. I'd write that on the top or whatever it is. And if I got a question wrong for that, mm -hmm. I would then go to that sheet of paper and just write down what I didn't know. So yeah. the night before the exam, I've got all these sheets of paper written in James's world as to yeah. what I didn't really get on there. So it sort of collated it a bit more nicely. And then I yeah. found what, what what was overlapping as well. Some students like yeah. to do spreadsheets. I'm quite a pen and paper yeah. guy, but just little things like that could be the difference to help anyone who's watching here today just uh, get them that extra mark or two on there. Yeah, that's a really good tip, actually. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. Well, I'm sure there's... Mistake. Mistake. <laughs> yeah. up somewhere, so you won't make them in the exam. Well, indeed. I mean, uh, I mean, that's the reason for the video for the students who are still watching right now. That they go, oh my gosh, <laughs> another golden nugget I need to write down on there. Yeah. But, but Amy, I must say, thank you so much for your time today, walking and talking us through what I what I always love to hear, and especially from the students who are watching this. Make sure you leave us a comment in the video at the bottom how you got on in your examination. If you're going to take on some of these tips and uh, let us know which way you're actually going to do your exam. If you're going to go ACB or ABC, I'd love to hear it down there. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed yourself today, Eileen, uh, Eileen sorry, as well today, uh, going through it. And uh, we'll, we'll look forward to doing a few more recordings on it. And yeah. how, did, how did your students get on for the December 2022 exams? Oh, do you know, they, I, I, quite a few of them said they could remember my voice telling them to read the requirement again before they moved on. And I was like, good, I'm glad. I'm glad the nagging was worth it. I'm glad you could hear my voice. <laughs> well, I've enjoyed the sound of your voice for today's recording. Like, I hope everyone who has, who's been watching this. So if you have enjoyed today's video, guys, make sure you do give it a like below. Leave us a comment how you get on in your exam. And of course, make sure you subscribe because uh, Aileen and I are going to be doing more videos like this. So you can definitely check us out. We'll leave the links down below so you can see them all. But I mean, obviously now, Aileen, we, we get to go away, chat some tax, uh, enjoy and uh, impress people when we're out and about that, uh, <laughs> that we enjoy reading these examiner's reports that I never <laughs> thought I would say on record. We do. We do. <laughs> That's all right. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video and best luck with your exam, guys. Thank you.